in both scholarly discourse and in the common culture, it is disseminated widely that the Roman Empire was the sort of civilizing force of the Western world. It was a horrible travesty when it collapsed, and without it, basically, we would never have learned to read or write, and that the peoples who existed in Western Europe at the time were, quote-unquote, barbarians. This is so widely accepted and promoted that really it, it often goes unquestioned, including those studying in the field. Now, of course, archaeologists know that for the most part this isn't accurate, but, you know, the, the history departments of universities around the world, really, but especially in the West that focus on Western history, have fetishized the Roman Empire and, to a lesser extent, Greek culture and civilization to the detriment of all others uh, until a person wouldn't even realize that any other cultures or civilizations existed. I mean, even you, you can't even find hardly any courses in university in North America that focus on even e Egyptology, for instance. Almost impossible, even though there is much to learn. There's no courses on this. But yet you have whole departments devoted to the study of Greek and Latin culture, well, including language, dead languages, including their philosophies, including their histories, including their literature, uh, the study of their art. Every aspect of these civilizations, they have huge departments devoted to them in almost every university. Almost every major university has a classics department, and you can get a degree in classics or a hi history degree focusing on the study of Greek and Roman history. Yet, there are slim few that have courses, even courses, let alone degrees in, for instance, Germanic studies, for instance, Celtic studies, any other cultural group native to Western Europe. Why? Now, I was watching a very bad documentary on BBC, which is what spawned my, my desire to, to talk about this today. And it was just r repeated over and over again. Yeah, the documentary was called How the Celts Saved Britain. So I was expecting some interesting takes. Well, not really. Not really. Uh, it was basically demonizing the early Celts and then talking about how once in the early Middle Ages when Ireland converted to Christianity, how it was a sort of uh, cultural preserving force without getting into any of the depth of why that was basically you know your typical line oh the romans brought great culture and civilization to britain when rome fell then britain fell back into barbarism and you know there was absolute chaos and the picts were killing everyone and raiders were enslaving everyone well, i mean these things were happening all over the place and and their great their great cultural cultivating empire was a slave empire what are they talking about here they try to they they leave out that the romans were were enslaving people and then just say oh well these barbarians were enslaving people you know the, when the romans were gone then they were just enslaving everybody the romans were a slave empire it just it beggars belief. But this is the narrative, right? And this is what they have to go with. So, first of all, the Romans didn't bring roads and writing and civilization to Western Europe. Didn't happen. The reason why the Romans invaded and conquered Western Europe is because these places already had functioning civilizations. They had towns. They had wealth which could be taken. They had, you know, a marginally functional people 
that could be enslaved and brought into the fold of the empire. This is why they took over the Celtic territories and largely left sort of the less developed Germanic tribes alone. They could have crushed them militarily and did so many times and never bothered taking their territory because there was nothing to take. This isn't a slight against the Germanic tribes, by the way. I have great respect for them. I'm just saying at the time period, they just hadn't established large-scale towns and therefore in the Roman mind there was no way to conquer and exploit these people because they were basically completely rural and controlling them was more difficult than it was worth. They couldn't, they couldn't extract surplus value from them. There was nothing to be gained. With the Celts, however, it was a different situation because many of them, except perhaps some in Pictland, they had established towns, villages, centralized authorities. They had an established religious order. They had highly educated people. How do we know this? Because Caesar himself tells us this. They had road networks, which they used for trading, because they often traded with the Mediterranean civilizations. And, as Caesar notes himself, they could read and write, or at least the higher-ups in their society could. Not like every Roman could read and write either. Let's not get ridiculous here. The majority of the people in all these civilizations were illiterate peasants. But the elites in the Celtic world believed that writing things down was actually an inferior method of education. And it did not force you to impart your knowledge directly to the next generation. When you write something down, people get lazy to say, oh, go read the books. Well, who reads the books? When you sit around at dinner time or after dinner and you sit around the fire and you you know, talk to your grandkids or your children and impart all your knowledge gained through your whole life every night through stories, through allegories, myths and legends. That is a real way of preserving the culture. And that's what that's what's, by the way, been lost in our society is because that doesn't happen anymore. We rely on televisions, computers, books. We don't talk to each other anymore. There's no transference of wisdom from one generation to the next. And I mean a direct, real connection. It's not the same you pop on a documentary and watch it and you think that you're getting... That's, that's not the same as uh, picking up a culture that's passed on from your forefather. But because of the rapid changes since the modernization... We've been disconnected from this, and its effects are just, in my opinion, just starting to be felt. It's going to get worse, a lot worse. Anyway, I'm getting way off track. The point is, Rome was not some great civilizing force. They were a force that opportunistically took over certain territories that were already civilized, that were already, and by civilized, it's a very bad term. Um, I should say, in fact, not civilized, but they had become slightly urbanized. That's the term I'm looking for, urbanized. Now, of course, urbanization back then was nothing like what we know today. But we're talking about, you know, small villages and, and towns that did not move every few years. Yeah, they took these places because they could control them. They could control the territory and extract wealth from them. It's not like the Roman Empire was some benevolent empire destined to bring quote-unquote civilization to the, the barbarians. That was never their view, and it, it shouldn't be what we think of them. Neither was their goal some grand domination either. It, it wasn't like their plan to take over the world or something. There was many parts of the world that they, they were well aware of that they never bothered to go that they could have easily taken over. 
because to them it just wasn't worth it. They didn't care. There was nothing there that they could make money off of, that they could get fame and wealth from. That's what motivated the Roman Empire. And by demonizing these people that came before the Roman Empire, just slandering them as barbarians, Celts and Germans alike, is perpetuating a myth. Now, it's true that Germanic tribes were not as advanced in many respects, but yet it was them who took out the Roman Empire in the end. These lowly, stupid barbarians that couldn't read or write, well, they took out the empire and ended up ruling Italy. I just really want people to reflect on what they've been learning. Both the hard left and the hard right tend to be pro-Roman Empire. And I mean communists, generally, are supportive of the Roman Empire and think it was a glorious period and if only this or that hadn't happened, then, you know, we would have had the Industrial Revolution in like 500 AD or something instead of 1700. So this, and of course the right wing likes them for, for other reasons. They they associate them with some sort of uh, white ethno empire, which, by the way, it never was. Uh, the Romans didn't really have strong inclinations about race. In fact, from my research, most ancient people didn't really discuss race all that much. They talked about um, regional differences in physical appearance. They didn't conceptualize that really as, as a racial identity. They associated with cultures, languages, um, ways of living. They didn't really focus on the physical attributes of people or the, their physical regional differences all that much except as passing observations. So, no, it wasn't some big ethno, white ethno-empire. Uh, they didn't care about that. Uh, they cared about wealth extraction, really. Power, control, and wealth. And that's all that it was about. And they were not more civilized than other peoples. Um, they were not the saviors of Europe, and they were not the creators of Europe either. As I mentioned in other videos, their swords are based on Celtic design. The road networks that, that they're credited for so widely in Europe were Celtic, except for the ones that were in Italy, of course. Um, you know, their horse combat and stuff had to be evolved from Celtic and Germanic peoples. Basically, the Roman Empire was really good at one thing, and that was taking concepts from other people and sort of mechanizing them, turning them into a, on a, putting them into effect on a grand scale because of their bureaucratic state machine, because of their conception of this empire. They were able to do things that other people were not at the time because they didn't have developed state systems, which, by the way, I tend to think is a good thing. And I think many of the reasons why the left likes the Roman Empire is because of this fetishization of the state. And they were the first ones to really establish um, a state, although their state was, by today's standards, completely unintrusive. I mean, they were really not capable of interfering in individual lives or in individual towns or cities all that much. You know, please get off this bandwagon of fetishizing the Roman Empire. Yeah, they did some cool things. Yeah, I respect them too uh, for their history and their culture and stuff. But they were not the only people that existed. And it's not like everyone else in the whole world at the time were you know, stupid dum-dums banging rocks together and chewing on dirt. Gaul, shortly after it was brought into the Roman Empire, quickly became one of the new power centers of the empire. Now, how does that happen if the place that you have just occupied is some backwater hole with no culture, education, 
and full of stupid, illiterate people. It does not happen that quickly. But you see that in the later Roman Empire, Gaul is extremely important. And people from there are actually the new sort of leaders of culture in the Roman Empire. I mean, this is why present-day France has a Romance language, because they adopted Latin so strongly during that period. Many Roman elite had taken Gaulish tutors for their children because they were widely known to be highly intelligent. In the 4th century, Asonius is widely cited as the best of the sort of Latin writers, and he was Gaulish. Likewise, Flavius Stilicho, late Roman general, almost basically de facto emperor of the West, in a sense, his father was a Vandal. His father was a member of a Germanic tribe who had enlisted in the Roman army. His father was probably a, a, a chieftain or a prince or, you know, a, a high-level uh, member of... Well, they didn't really have established nobility per se, but, you know, someone very highly respected in, a, in the Vandal tribe or one of the Vandal tribes. And so he had achieved a relatively high status in the Roman military. Now, how does that happen? How, do, how does Rome incorporate these people into the upper echelons of its functioning if these people were stupid, backwater savages? How did Ireland, in the early Middle Ages, thrive as a cultural center of learning and literature if it was occupied by backwater savages with no towns, villages, basically, you know, just a bunch of peasants sitting around eating mud? I guess the magic of St. Patrick was pretty strong. Obviously. Obviously, these people were in a highly developed society already. One that, due to their spiritual beliefs, rejected writing, but nevertheless had a very high-functioning culture and society focused on learning. And what you see after the adoption of Christianity in Ireland is that most of the former Druids became priests. And they simply converted their Druidic sites into Christian sites. And they changed their Druidic orders into monasteries. This is exactly what happened in Ireland. And that is why you had this so-called birth of culture in Ireland in the early Middle Ages. Where, where most other places were declining in literature. It's not some magic of St. Patrick. It was that the Celtic culture there already was highly functioning. All they did was, because they switched their certain aspects of their beliefs to adopt Christianity, they adopted writing, and then started writing. And then so, poof, to historians, they think, wow, this magical civilization just erupted out of nothing. Because to the historian, who is trapped you know, only thinking, you know, civilization starts when people are writing history books. You know, they can't conceptualize a society that's highly functional, that's highly intelligent, that's highly sophisticated, that does not write. They just, they can't accept it. But this is what our actual archaeological and historical studies show. Anyway, that's probably a topic for another video. Just please, 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 I don't want to hear any more about how Rome saved the West from barbarism.